I'm interested as to what happens in these environments, how, much, how painful it is for the executives leading the business and the people who've invested. Yeah, so thanks so much for having me, Caroline. So I will say that at Manhattan Business Partners, where we invest in growth and late stage companies, much like Klarna, while they're really hitting the peak trajectory of their business, is that we still believe that extraordinary companies backed by the, invest the best investors will deliver these types of outsized returns. And so even though Klarna has seen their valuation compressed, we believe in their long-term prospects very much so. And I think that they're deploying a number of strategies to keep the existing employee base and executive base retained. Yeah, because talk to us. I mean, you're, you're someone who thinks a lot about, well, liquidity in the secondary market. And a lot of that, often these big valuations and moments of exit, which are currently the doors have shut to a certain extent, are because it's about talent management. It's about ensuring that they're able to take some money out, have a liquidity event. How hard has that become at the moment? Well, for the best companies in this world, there's always going to be demand, right? So I think that that's something that we always measure when we evaluate companies, whether it's on a primary basis or on a secondary basis. And when it comes to Klarna, there's always been a really healthy volume of activity in the business. And investors are really excited about the prospects of where they're growing, because as of right now, they are the market leader across all geographies in the buy now, pay later space and growing much further than just that nature of its business. And so I would say the prospects of the secondary market continue to get rather exciting and have created some really unique opportunities to buy into the business or dollar cost average across both businesses like Klarna and others. What are you wanting to see from the leadership at Klarna, but the leadership of all your companies that you've currently been backing and some that, of course, have seen exits themselves, but some that continue to grow in this environment. How, do you want them to be focused more in on profit in this environment? Absolutely. So I do say across the board that we're really focusing on seeing our companies invest in that profitability and increase their margins so that they can get above the line, right? And at least be in the single digit profitability margins where Klarna has sit for the last 14 years of its business, if not longer, right? So Klarna is an exceptional example of a company who knows how to increase its profitability and control it. Overall, though, for other businesses across our portfolio and others in the venture landscape, it's that we might want to turn down the, not, the dial a bit on sales and marketing spend and really increase that profit margin, which is really a level of just baking in those levers, right? Saying, hey, maybe we don't need to spend so much on Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads this quarter, or maybe, hey, we don't need to put as much money into creating a new layer of product roadmap and instead just focus on the products that deliver, right? Mm. And focus on the customers who are there versus creating new innovative products just as a way to be uh, unique in their product market fit direction. How about products that had seen a real winner in terms of well, acquisition of new customers, certainly I think of Revolut, another European pinup in terms of well, success story in the fintech world, and they really had doubled down on offering crypto, for example, to bring in new users. But with the fallout and valuation there as well, are you likely to see products moved away from or do you think they'll remain committed to them? I think that what they'll stop doing is just de delivering on new products, right? I think as we look at companies like Klarna and like Revolut, is that they want to shift away from the core focus that they've been you know, honed in on for Klarna, it's buy now, pay later, for example, and instead focus on creating volume from their existing user base, which is something we are really excited about, right? I think generally companies like Klarna realize where their public comps sit and they want to ensure that they're creating their own market position away from those public comps and seeing that their growth can continue while just honing in on the products that have always been proven to be successful for these companies, right? And so I really love how Sebastian, uh, the CEO of Parna today, said on Twitter that what doesn't kill you make you stronger because it's a it's a business that I think generally understands exactly where their mindset could be to keep honing in on the products that win. And with this new capital infusion for Klarna, it's really going to allow them to keep that expansion growing across the United States, which is something where their public comp firm has predominantly had a dominant force, but Klarna, a as we know, is just growing so much more faster at a 300% you know, annual growth rate relative to them as a comp. So we have a lot of uh, hope there. Well, from your perspective, how long does this 
sort of quietening down in the private markets and valuations last fall. And I'm not saying every business is affected by it. I think you're in Flexport, of course, which is a company that's, well, really ramping up because there's a supply chain disaster out there and they're a company that can help. But there are areas like Instacart, which this is an inflationary environment. How long does that persist, do you think, Andrea? Yeah, so I would say right now, we really need to see what the results of the first half of the year look like across all businesses, right? I think we're just closing the books on Q2 um, and going into Q3. And generally, where the reflection of the market is going to sit is what companies will be ready to go out, go mm -hmm. public going into Q3 and ideally the months of September, October, and anything before the Thanksgiving holiday for the U.S. companies. That's where I would see there might be a shift in sentiment. But what's mm -hmm. happening is companies like Instacart, uh, for example, are filing their registration yeah. statement. They're using really broad-based language to, des to describe what kind of statement um, and company they're going to be as a public company and determine whether that's right to go out. So these companies are choosing when to go out based on yeah. where the market will be, but at least they're ready to do so if it opens up.